now that we've pulled in the trial balance, we can start creating some financial statements. So I've used the name button to put the enterprise name there. This is a balance sheet. And I'm going to use this date button to fill in the date. And it, it picks 2014 because that is the trial balance that we read. This could be in any format. I happen to have this formatted into a custom format, year, 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 year. Obviously, in other places, we would change the format to say 12, 31, 14. Okay, so we'll start with some assets for cash. We want to put in our cash balance. So item balance, this has a lot of functionality in it. I'm going to click on item balance. And I'm going to get this window here, which I can move to wherever is convenient for me. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to click Keep Position and Size. So now each time this window opens, it'll open right there and expand it to how I want it expanded. On the right side are all the ungrouped accounts. And right now, that's all the accounts. We haven't grouped anything. On the left is where we're going to be moving accounts to to create groups out of them that will represent, in our case here, financial statement line items. So it might be helpful for us to see our account balances. Sometimes if we're trying to group things, it helps us to recognize which account is which. So I'm going to click on that, and now I have my account balances just as a reference. Over here, where it says cents, that's where it's going to show me whether by default the grouped accounts are debit or credit accounts. And if I need to, we can actually change that because sometimes you might want something added or subtracted and you want to flip-flop it. So that's an option for us as well. List all accounts over here. This is You can click on that if you want to bring all the accounts that you've already grouped back onto your screen to perhaps use them again if you're working on a, a worksheet where you want to use the same accounts perhaps in a grouping in one place and in a different grouping in another place. So that's, that's something we, we won't demonstrate today, but just know that that is an option as you think about some more complicated financial reports that you probably create because what we're creating here right now is a very simple balance sheet. Okay, so I see that I have three cash accounts on top here. So I'm going to select each one and click Move. And this can be in any order. The order completely doesn't matter. So I could move one of these back and change my mind and move it back again. It's very flexible until I get the right answer. And the whole time I make those changes, my cell D12 is changing. So let me show you that again. If I remove savings right away, it shows me the balance without savings. If I move savings back, there's my complete cash balance. Okay, so let's move on to short term deposits. Again, I'm going to click on item balance once, and I have a couple short term deposit accounts account 12,000 and account 18,700. So I clicked move to get them to group together. As soon as I did that, my balance showed up. Next I can show you the suggested item titles. So I'm going to click on that. And what I get is a list of all of the account titles in this file, some of which are helpful and happen to be the exact same title you're looking for. So in this case, we have the accounts receivable. I just double clicked on it and it saves me a little bit of typing when creating my report. And I click on item balance again. I only have one accounts receivable accounts, so I'm going to move that over. Then I'm going to do the same with my prepaid expenses. Only one account there as well, so that's easy. And then my inventory. 
Now another way for me to access the item balance is with right click. So with the right click I get my context menu and I can pick suggested titles, item balance, or total right here at the bottom. I'm going to pick item balance and I get that same window. I'm going to move my inventory account over to the left and now I have all of my current assets, all of those accounts grouped into the proper financial statement line items. So I'm ready to total up the current assets. Now I'm not going to use the sum function in Excel because on its own Excel doesn't understand debits or credits and doesn't always round how we like to round in accounting. So I'm going to click on total and I see now on the right all of the line items I have grouped together but I can now further group them into a total. So I'm going to with my shift key select them all, move them all to the left, and as soon as I do that my total shows up here in D17. Let's also do our deposits on rent and wages. We're going to now complete the balance of deposits on rent and wages on our balance sheet. And I'm going to click on item balance either from the tab on my ribbon or right click on the context menu and I have a couple accounts to group here that creates my deposit balance. And then lastly, let's also complete our fixed assets so we have all of our assets together. Right click, item balance, and using the shift key, I'm going to select all of the fixed asset accounts and the accumulated depreciation accounts. Move that over into a grouped account. So now I'm going to total again, click on total and I see everything that I have previously grouped. So that's all the current assets and then the two we just did. And we do want a total of everything there. So I'm going to move that over and now we have a total for our assets. Building a financial statement essentially consists of grouping the accounts into items and grouping the items into totals. Any balance appearing in a financial statement is either one of these two types. I will actually spare you from watching me type the liabilities and the stockholders' equity, but I'll just show you that the same thing here. We found a lot of accounts payable and accrued liabilities accounts that we grouped together, some long-term liabilities, and then for retained earnings, all that was left after we grouped everything else is the retained earnings account and all of the P&L accounts. So we took all the revenues and expenses, grouped them all together to get our retained earnings total for this year. Okay, now we could probably round. We can round at any point in time. So I'm going to click the rounded button and as you can see our balances are now rounded and they still add up correctly. This is a toggle, so I can turn this off by clicking it again and unround my balances if I want to. I'm going to leave them rounded. Let me show you also this toggle here. This is an interesting one. So I'm going to click on any balance, in this case cash, and I'm going to click on details. When I do that, I can see the accounts that belong to this line item. I can do that with any one of these or all of them. And then when I click on it again, those details disappear. So this could be useful if you just want to quickly check what did you include in this group, or you could leave it showing for a final report if you'd like to have those details. And again, you just turn it on and off as you need it. If we had made adjustments, we could turn on or off the adjusted balances so we could see unadjusted and then turn it back on to adjusted balances. So everything in here affects how we show the financials we've created. Now I'm going to switch it over to a comparative balance sheet. And this is my favorite button in Excel FSM, the comparative button. So in order to create comparative financial statements, 
This is very complicated, so please watch carefully. I'm going to click the button. There's only one prior period in my file, so I'm going to click OK. And there's my comparative financials. I think just for presentation, I'm going to add another column here. Get rid of the orders. In fact, we can even get rid of the grid line, see what this would look like. It's kind of a final report. So very easy to do. I could have had more prior periods in there to include, and it would give me that option. Go to our website, excel-fsm.com, and download your 30-day free trial that lets you have a full version of the software for 30 days.